Hi, this is Simon Abstall and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I wanted to show you how to make this drawing with light effect. So it's quite a pretty effect, but there's really not a great deal to it. The key thing is to be very organized and to understand how to publish and connect to polyline paths. So let's take a look. OK, so the first thing we need to do is to bring in our vectors for our text. So having vectors for the text shapes is crucial to making this effect work. And what I've done is I've made this over an Illustrator but really you can use any application that you want that will export an SVG and obviously allows you to convert text to paths. You can't work with text itself, it's got to be a path. So I'm going to come to File and Import and SVG. Now, if you're in the uh, Resolve Fusion page, you'll need to come to the Fusion menu and import it from there. The Fusion menu, which is kind of roughly up here where I'm pointing to. So anyway, File, Import, SVG and I'm going to navigate to my SVG here. Now what I've done very deliberately is make my artboard in Illustrator, which is where I made this, I've made it square. If, if you make it square it's going to make your life in Fusion much much easier, so do that. So okay, bring that in. Because I've exported the text as paths, we get this little group here and if I open up the group and we take a look at what's inside, you'll see that we have got I look over here, we've got a path for each letter like this. So what we need to do first of all is we need to rename all of these. So F2 to rename it, I'm going to rename this L, this one as I, and so on down the list. I'll come back when I've done. Okay, so now I've got them named L-I-G-H-T. And what we want to do is we want to be able to use these paths for our animation. So what we need to do in order to do that is to publish them. So I've got the L selected there. I'm going to come over here and where it says right click here for shape animation, I'm going to right click and I'm going to publish. And I'm going to do that for all five letters. So publish in each case like this. So those are all now available for use. And we can indeed close up this group because we're actually done with it. We can just refer to it in a different way. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make my shapes. And to make my shapes, I'm going to use the S polygon tool. Let's add that. Let's have a quick look at that over here. What we're going to do is right click here. We're going to remove the existing polyline. And then we're going to right click again. And we're going to connect to our L polyline. And you can see that that is now our L shape over here on the right. So again, it would make sense to call this L shape. So we're going to do that with all five letters. But before I do that, I just want to set this up properly. So we don't want it to be solid. So let's turn that off and let's have a border width of 0 0.005. So I'm going to set up my timeline to be 240 frames long. And what I want to do is I want to animate this length parameter. As you can see, if I move that, that writes the, the, writes the text on. So at the first frame, let's hit a keyframe, set that down to zero. Let's come forward to frame 120 and set that length all the way up to one. So now it just writes on like that. We've got our animation set up. So now we just need to duplicate this L shape and connect it to the other source shapes. So Command C, Command V. Let's call this I shape. And over here, let's remove its publish thing. So right click here, remove the publish, and now we can reconnect it to the I. Let's actually just make a an S merge here so we can merge them all together. S merge, merge this one in here. Now we've got both our first two shapes. So we're going to do that with all five and I'll just show you it but whiz through. So there you go, they're all connected up, they're all nicely labeled. So then actually let's add to this S merge an extrude. Extrude tool, add that. 
let's have an extrusion depth of 0 0.001, just a little bit of depth like that. So now it's a 3D shape. So what we want to do is have this lying flat on the floor. So we'll set the X rotation to be negative 90. So let's give it a floor to sit on. So let's add a 3D shape like that. So because I had my extrude selected, it's automatically made the merge as well. So let's look at the result of that. Come over to the transform, X rotation of negative 90. Material, let's just make it nice and dark like that to get us going. Come over to the controls, make the size 4. OK, so the next thing we need to do, I'm just going to hide this first viewer. Let's just tidy things up here because we can actually just group all of that. Control G just to tidy it all up. And we can put this over here. So now we need to think about the lighting. And to do the lighting, I'm going to add a three point light to my 3D merge here. Let's come to the 3D options and turn on lighting. So I just want to move this point light up a little bit. I'm going to move it up 2.05, I think, on Y like that. I'm just going to turn off the grid. So 3D options, turn off the grid. Let's zoom in here. So here's our light. And we want it to follow along with the path of the L. So the thing is, we can't attach it in the normal way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 2D dummy that we can connect it to. And I'm going to use the transform tool just because it's quite simple. And I'm going to just rename this as L path, the path for the light. So I'm going to select the center value of the transform, right click, and I'm going to add a path. And then I'm going to click over to the modifiers tab. So then what we want to do is again down here where it says right click here for shape animation. We want to right click there and we want to connect this to the L polyline path. Now, I'm just going to quickly add a little background in there and make it green. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this to show you what I've actually done. So if we pipe it into there. So let's come back to the modifiers. So let's come to the first frame here. What we want to do is we want to animate the displacement. So first of all, I'm just going to remove path displacement just to clear that out. At the first frame, I'm going to click on the keyframe button. Let's come forward to frame 120 and set that displacement value to 1. So now we've got this background moving along that path. So we can use this path now to connect the light to. So let's come back to the light and we're just going to do it with an expression on the X. So right click, add expression to the X. So we know that we want to target the L path. So type in L path there. We've carefully renamed that. So we want dot center dot x and minus 0.5. So let's now come back to our merge and see what we've got. Well, light is moving backwards and forwards on x. So what we also need to do is connect up the z because z is sort of backwards and forwards on our floor. So let's right click on the z. Let's add an expression. Let's copy this and just paste it in there. Obviously, we want to link to the center Y in this case. Now, what we have to do is we actually have to invert this. So I'm going to put all of that in brackets like that. And at the end, I'm going to type times minus one. And now you'll see that light is actually following along. I think actually my value here is much too much. Well, I don't know why I went with 0 0.05. Let's go for 0 0.01. That's more like it. So it's sitting on the floor like that. There you go. 0 0.01 for the Y. Let's come over to the controls. Let's switch the decay type to linear. Uh, let's set the intensity down to something like 0.2. So now that light is following along as the letters are writing on. So what we actually want with our shape letters, I'm just going to come back and fix this now, is to make them self-illuminated. So let's open up our group. Let's come to the extrude and let's come to its material and let's turn off receives lighting. And you can see now they become self-illuminated, so that's good. So let's come back to our light, and we just want to do a little bit of animation on it. I'm going to come to frame 100, keyframe that intensity. I'm going to come forward to, I think, 140, and set that intensity down to something like 0 0.05, like that. So having written on, it's just going to be a little bit less bright like that. Actually, maybe even reduce that. Let's go for 0 0.025. Yeah, OK, that's good. 
So let's call it L light. And then we are going to do the same thing as we did before. So I'm just going to remove that background. We don't need that background. I'm going to take this L path and copy it. We need to call this I path. And we need to come over to the modifiers. We need to right click here. We need to remove the publish. And we need to connect this to the I, so I polyline value. Then we can copy this light. In actual fact, I'm going to add a 3D merge after that light so we can keep things a little bit tidier. Add a 3D merge after that light. Copy the light, paste the light, add this to this 3D merge here. Let's rename this as I light. Let's come over to the transform. And what we're going to do here is just going to retype this expression. So instead of L path, in both cases, we're going to use I path. Now, the lights have disappeared. And that's because on this merge here, we have to turn on pass through lights. There you go. So now they're passing through that merge. I'm doing that just to keep these lights tidy in their own little space there. So now we just need to go through and do it for everything. I'm not going to talk that through. I'm just going to whiz through and do it. So now after a bit of a hiccup there, I've actually got everything sorted. If we look from the top here, we can see that all our lights are connected, all our paths are drawing on. And let's just group all those lights, select all of that and group it. Let's call this lights. OK, first of all, I think I want to just adjust this floor. So let's rename that shape as floor. I'm going to bring in my texture. So here's my texture. Again, I'll give you this as an asset along with that text asset. This is what the texture looks like. So I'm going to add to it a luma key, and then I'm going to add a blin. We don't want that going into the diffuse input. We want it going into the specular intensity like that. Let's have a look at the blin. Let's have a look at the luma key. What we want to do is adjust this till we're getting lots of nice texture there on that. So let's come back to the blin and let's select the color and make it kind of dark gray like that as we did before. So now we can use that blin as the material for the floor like that. And we can come over and look at our merge here. So we're not seeing a great deal yet. Let's add a 3D renderer here. And let's switch to a hardware renderer. Let's also to this 3D merge add a 3D camera. So let's look at the 3D renderer. Let's look at the camera. Let's come to the transform. We want to set the Z position to something like, I don't know, 2.5 just to get us going. I'm going to do my usual trick of linking the Z pivot to the Z translation. So add an expression to the Z pivot, pick whip the Z translation, add a negative sign in the front there. And now I can set that X rotation to negative 30. And we're looking down on our scene like that. So we need to come back to our render and we need to obviously enable the lighting. So now we've got that and you can see that nice texture that we've got on the floor there. What else am I going to do? Oh yeah, this was all about rays, wasn't it? I think the first thing I'm going to do is add a soft glow after this renderer. Let's have a look at that. Much too much. Let's set the blend down to 0.2 and let's maybe even just adjust the color. A little bit less red, a little bit more blue. So then after this soft glow, we are going to add this is the really simple bit. We're going to add a raise. So let's look at that. And what we want to do is set that Y center to something like negative five. And we want to reduce the decay down to something like 0 0.001. So it's really nice and long there. We can't see the top. And you can play with all of this. You can even have more exposure or less exposure, whatever you want. I'm not really going to waste time on that. It's pretty obvious what you can do there with the rays. So I think all that I want to do is I want to add another light in here. And at this time I want to add in a spotlight. Let's come to the transform. Let's set the X rotation to 180 and the Z position to negative seven. And you can see we've got a light in the background there. Come over to the controls, switch the decay type to linear, maybe just reduce the decay rate just a bit like that so we can see that light there in the background. If I turn that on and off, gives us a little bit more sort of global illumination. And let's come to the camera. And the last thing I'm going to do is just set that up. Actually, let's keyframe the Z translation and the 
X rotation and the Y rotation. So for that Z position, let's go with two as the start. So let's go for negative 20 for the X rotation. For the Y rotation, let's go for negative 30. Let's come to the end. Let's set this Z position to be maybe three. And let's set the Y rotation to be five and the X rotation to be negative 30. So we're looking down a bit more. So we're getting that sort of animation there. And the last thing we need to do is just to add in a background. So add in a background here, pipe the rays over the top of the background, and let's look at the result. Just a little mistake I wanted to correct. I forgot to add any Y translation to this spotlight. Let's set that to maybe two. And let's have a look at the result. It was unfortunately just sitting flat on the floor and that was creating all sorts of issues. And we could actually just reduce the intensity of that down. So sorry about that. So there you go. That's how to create this effect. Really quite simple. It's all about just being really organized with your naming and your publishing and so on. So hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.